Yeah, you read the video title correctly. I've finally done it. I'm finally going off the edge and doing some acetone melted sprues. This is a sprue from, um, I have no idea actually. I have a small collection of sprues and eventually I should probably do something with them. I of course have a little bit of acetone left, but you can see that it's, it's kind of gone dark in the bottom of the bottle there. Um, which is fine because I've been using it for paint stripping, particularly metal models. Uh, acetone takes paint off of metal models in all of 15 seconds. And so what I've done is I've gone and bought a whole great big bottle of the stuff. That is a litre of acetone. So if I grab the jar, throw some bits of sprue in, I can pour, pour my old acetone and you know what? It's covered, but I'll give it just a little bit extra. Fresh stuff. And if I seal that up, I now have a jar of acetone and plastic. But what possible purpose have I got for such a thing? Well, let me explain. And for that, I need to just grab a thing. And that thing is this thing. And for those of you who've been watching my Gaunt's Ghost videos for a while, you may just recognize this thing, this mold, as being a mold for the Tanith camo cloaks. When I first started sculpting cloaks, I had the idea that if I could make a mold, I could get most of the way to a cloak every time, very repeatable, very easy to do, and then I would only have to sculpt in the details each time. Well, it turns out that was kind of half a good idea and kind of half a bad idea. Um, I generally don't use this for that anymore, but I have used it a few times, and so I may as well use it again. And with my slowly melting acetone sludge. The uh, sprues at the bottom of this will turn into a very pliable soft and I'll be able to put it into this mold and create a cloak. Won't the cloak be completely flat because the mold is completely flat? The advantage of using something like Milliput in a mold like this is that I can fold the Milliput over a model while it's still curing. Well, the same can be true of the acetone melted uh, sprue goo, sprue pieces. Well, sprue goo is probably the uh, appropriate term. And so if I leave it exactly the right length of time, which may be difficult because I've not done that before, because I'm not necessarily sure what the exact timings would be, I can put the melted polystyrene sprue into the mold, wait the correct period of time until it's just it's firm enough to, f to kind of manipulate it and move it around. And I actually have a precedent for that. This model here has a cloak made with this cloak mold. And this is a two part epoxy resin that I mixed up and I had a little bit of spare. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pour it into my cloak mold. And if I come back at the exact right time, I might be able to fold this around a model and make a cloak work and you know what I managed that quite well I think you do have to be careful when doing something like this with an epoxy resin uh, same way as epoxy putty because uh, it's a chemical and it's still curing you can damage it you can crack it and it's also still toxic so you should still wear gloves so on and so forth um, I'm not really gonna show that process in this video because well it, it's done I've, I've finished it. it it's complete and so if I just wait for tomorrow until this sprue stuff actually melts enough to put into the mold, but while we're waiting for these pieces of sprue to uh, melt properly so that we can put them into our mold, I actually need a model to put the cloak onto. So let's build a model. And starting that with my special Gaunt's Ghost Bits box, I picked out a few good pieces, but I also went rooting through my other Bits boxes and found this pair of arms. They are from the Empire something or other kit from Warhammer Fantasy Battles back in the square base days. And this rolled sleeved aesthetic is pretty cool and I've wanted to use them on a ghost ever since the last time I used them on a ghost. I've already used this set of arms on another model um, that's been sitting around for months unfinished. 
Hacking off the blunderbuss from the hand and the last gun's grip away so that these parts match is fairly easy. They don't fit perfectly, but it's close enough for the effect. And I will be keeping the head separate for the moment. Looking back on the acetone, the polystyrene had fully melted into a greasy smear at the bottom, with not enough for me to scoop out, so I added some more sprues and left them for a few more hours. Reclaiming the scrap material from projects in this way is a small thing, but it's really useful to do. Rather than buying yet more stuff just to break it down, well, break down the leftovers from your last kit. With the sprues fully melted into a paste, I grabbed a splodge and filled the mould. I tried to clean up the edges a little, and I was surprised at just how quickly the surface was hardening. And I even tried turning it over to get texture from the mould on both sides, but that didn't actually work. After a few hours to evaporate a little more of the acetone, it was still just soft enough to fold, and it felt strangely like a, a bag of gel like the mixture inside was more fluid than on the surface. Squishing this over the model was a little fiddly. I had to use some polystyrene cement to hold it in position, and strangely the cement evaporated and stuck pretty much immediately as normal and the acetone had no effect on that. The blob cloak seemed to hold bigger shape changes better, like folding the drape section down over the model's back but resisted smaller changes like the little adjustments around the neck. Lastly, I added the head, one of my last Scion Beret heads, and I left the model for several days to fully evaporate the acetone. And I highly recommend leaving it longer rather than rushing through because if you have acetone trying to evaporate through your paint, well, yeah, that can be bad. Once that was fully solid, all that's left is to paint them, and I may as well paint the resin cloaked model I showed off earlier as well. The painting is, of course, all that you've seen before, mixing two paints for each section, greys, browns, greens, and spotting in the caro pattern last. The slurry mixture had taken on quite a texture as I was pressing it into the model, and I'm sure that that texture had been accentuated by the shrinkage as the acetone evaporated. And this texture really makes the plastic look like rippling cloth. It's maybe a bit too busy for this type of model, but it's an effect that looks very interesting and gave a lot of ridges for me to highlight. I thought it was a meme, I thought it was just hype, but this technique of acetone melting polystyrene has a lot of benefits. It has some downsides too, you shouldn't be breathing in the fumes from this much acetone, and it's very fiddly to get it to stay in the shape you want it to. I wonder if there's some possibility of sculpting, smoothing, carving, and other sorts of techniques into the styrene at different stages. That might be something I have to look into. But here are the models complete with a resin cloak and a sprue slurry cloak made with my old silicon cloak mold. The meme is real with turning sprues into model pieces, as of course the miniature hobbyist has been showing off for months. I know a few of you watching my videos are also watchers of the miniature hobbyist's videos, so do shout that out in the comments. And of course for everyone else, you can share this video with anyone who you think might be interested. But for now, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.